Yo, what's good, original crew, man? We're back. We got five most disturbing Craigslist ads. Have you ever uh, went on Craigslist and tried to buy anything? I used to, yeah. <laughs> Back in the day. What did you used to get on Craigslist? Back in the day when I used to want a puppy. Oh, my I used to get on there and try to look for, like, puppies. I remember at one point, I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, you turn in a certain age. I was like, oh, my gosh, I want to go in here and try to find me a car. I didn't, I wasn't driving <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I wasn't driving, but I was like, if I find a car, then it'll motivate me to go, you know. Mm, I don't know. You know, teenage wow. things. Wow. Um, I've never been on Craigslist before. I don't even know how Craigslist looks. Oh, really? I've never been on Craigslist. Never. Wow. Now, when I when I was used to throw parties and stuff, yeah, and I used to be like, man, how y'all getting like these, like these cribs and like all this, uh, like different places to rent. Yeah. Like it was hard for me to rent spots because you know what I'm saying. That's just lack of resources out here to go out and get spots. But some of the people I knew that was already doing it in the business, that was like, no, nah, he's just going to create list, find a crib that's up for set. I'm like, but they be saying stipulations. They be like, man, well, don't know the hurdle. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I ain't finna. But a couple of times, they, like, this was when Airbnb got popping. They were like mm -hmm. going to Airbnb. Folks started charging after the wah. Mm -hmm. Wazoo. Yeah. <laughs> but with that being said, man, before we get into it, make sure you check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go if you want to first support. All you have to do is check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's visuals. Lock it in with a thumbs up. But let's go. Let's check it out. Let's see what's about. You ready? I'm ready. All right. In 2011, this job posting was uploaded to Craigslist, asking for someone to watch over a patch of farmland and feed a few cows somewhere in southern Ohio in exchange for $300 a week. It ended up being one of the most notorious cases of ad-related crimes of the decade. The ad read, Caretaker position for farm, southern Ohio. Simply watch over a 688-acre patch of hilly farmland and feed a few cows. You get $300 a week and a nice two-bedroom trailer. Someone older and single preferred, but will consider all. Relocation a must. You must have a clean record and be trustworthy. This is a permanent position. The farm is used mainly as a hunting preserve, is overrun with game, has a stocked three-acre pond, but some beef cattle will be kept. Nearest neighbor is a mile away. The place is secluded and beautiful. It will be a real getaway for the right person. Job of a lifetime. If you are ready to relocate, please contact ASAP. Position will not stay open. Include name, age, phone number, and email, please. So I'm trying to remember back in 2011. I used to work back in 2011. 300 a week is not a lot back in 2011. 300, what's that? $600 every two weeks? That's twelve hundred dollars a month. I mean, I get this is the thing. I guess it's a lot because you are already providing them with a place to stay. You know what I'm saying? So somebody that maybe, but they said that they're looking for someone older than a single. Yeah, someone older and single prefer, but we, we'll, but we'll consider all. I don't even. I don't like that. If thing. I'm older, older typically somebody who's older that would that's single and would take this job don't have a clean record. No, so, for so, for that amount of some price. people, some people for that price, three hundred a week. Yeah, for that price, and then no. what else did you say? I don't even like that you said that. That would have turned me off. The, the fact that you said the closest neighbor, the nearest neighbor is a mile away. Well, that's, it's, it's, a, it's a farm. It's secluded, right. so the nearest neighbor but is gonna be. It's gonna be. A, yeah, that's cool for now. But I don't know. You didn't have to. You didn't, you didn't have, have, to have to include all of that because. Well, I guess that, maybe you want to know. If you, you know what I'm saying, maybe I read I read into things too much. Maybe because I'm just that type of person, I overanalyze everything. But still, the three hundred dollars a week that would have turned you off. No, it's that I remember working during that in 2011. 2011, yeah. You probably don't remember working in 2011. I did work in 2011. Barely. Oh, uh, three hundred dollars ain't enough. For you real. ain't right. Especially to look out over this much land. Yeah, that's a and lot. feed cow. No. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's too much for like that's that's not enough to 
for that a t- nice two bedroom trailer. That's just a little know. ass trailer, man. Yeah, and they're probably stanky. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what if the bedding I want to for, provide all clean necessities? That I still gotta put, put buy my boots. Cause do I have pants, to like keep everything like? Up, or yeah. do you do that for no, me? You, I gotta you, feed myself. You. you. Yeah, so that's not... 1200 a month. Ain't, I mean, 1200 Yeah, 1200 a month. Every month, yeah, because it'd be three That ain't weeks. enough. Yeah. It's not enough. Mm-hmm. The men who responded to the ad were interviewed directly by a man who identified himself as Jack, along with his 16-year-old accomplice, Brogan Rafferty, whom he referred to as his nephew. The candidates who made it to the interview stage said they didn't notice anything strange about Jack or his so-called nephew, and that they just looked like a couple of farmers who needed someone to look after their land. Scott Davis, a 48-year-old man who was interviewed by Jack over breakfast at a little restaurant in Marietta, Ohio, was the second to last candidate to go through the screening process for the job. After breakfast, he rode with Jack and Brogan to a remote wooded area near Akron. Immediately after getting out of the car to survey his surroundings, Davis heard a clicking sound. He turned around to see Jack pointing a gun at him. It was then that he realized that the click he heard had been the gun misfiring, but before he could react, Jack shot him in the elbow. Despite the wound, Davis managed to escape. He ran for his life for seven hours through the woods, eventually finding a house and asking the owner for help. They called 911, and news about the incident began to spread. Five days later, police received a call from a woman named Deborah Bruce, who claimed that her 51-year-old twin brother David Pauly had responded to the same job ad on Craigslist. According to Deborah, her brother had driven from Virginia to Ohio with all his belongings in his car in the hopes that the new job would work out for him and help him get back on his feet. Tragically, a couple days later, police found the body of David Pauly along with the body of another victim by the name of Ralph Geiger buried in the woods close to where Scott Davis had been shot in the elbow. At this point in the case, investigators were able to identify a pattern in the victims. Jack and Brogan targeted homeless, down-on-their-luck, or otherwise vulnerable middle-aged men with limited family ties and lured them to an isolated location under the appearance of a life-changing job opportunity, only to later rob them of all their belongings and shoot them on the spot. Their hope was that, because of their few family ties, their disappearance would go unnoticed, giving Jack and Brogan enough time to bury the bodies and get rid of the evidence. This pattern explains why certain candidates were rejected during the interview process, such as 58-year-old Ron Sanson, a former Navy officer with a college degree, and an unnamed woman in her 20s who had also applied for the job. During the investigation, police traced the Craigslist ad, which led them to the home of a man named Joe Bice in Akron, Ohio. He denied posting the ad and claimed that it was probably posted by the man who rented out his basement space. When police asked Joe Bice for the name of his tenant, he responded that he only knew him as Dutch. Investigators were able to track Dutch down thanks to a phone call that he made to Joe Bice, unaware that his landlord had been in contact with the police. Mm. On November 16, 2011, police arrested Dutch and identified him as 52-year-old Richard Beasley. Scott Davis immediately confirmed that this was the same man who had interviewed him at the restaurant and shot him in the Mm. woods. Apparently, Richard Beasley had fled from the police and used different identities to avoid being detected, even using the names of some of his victims. Around that time, police also arrested Brogan Rafferty, Richard Beasley's teenage accomplice. At the time, Brogan was a 16-year-old high school student from Stowe, Ohio, whom Beasley had mentored and taken under his wing. Police searched Rafferty's house and found several weapons, as well as a disturbing poem hidden in his computer files from August 16, 2011. The chilling poem read, We took him out to the woods on a humid summer's night. The loud crack echoed and I didn't hear the thud. Investigators later determined that the poem described the murder of Ralph Geiger, one of the victims police had found in the woods. A few days later, on November 25th, a fourth victim, a 47-year-old man named Timothy Kern, was found dead in the woods behind a mall in Akron. In 2013, Brogan Rafferty was sentenced to life without parole, and Richard Beasley was sentenced to execution after being found guilty of 27 total accounts of aggravated murder, aggravated robbery, kidnapping, and possession of illegal weapons. This innocent looking job ad ended up being one of the most notorious luring posts in the site's history, and it played a strong contributing role to the sketchy connotation that Craigslist carries nowadays. Yeah. Why haven't we, well, why haven't I, I don't know if you, why haven't I ever heard of the Craigslist serial killer? Because that's what it is. It's the Craigslist serial killer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like... 27? 27. Damn. 
Because I was right. wondering what they did with the 16 year old. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The whole time, I'm like, so what he getting? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because technically, he associated, mm-hmm. he is uh, uh, assisted with the murders. I wonder how many did he assist with. For him. And typically, this is what I always think about when I think about the serial killers. I'm like, all right, you went down for 27. Yeah. Nine times out of ten it's is more. more. You gonna admit to twenty seven, but you ain't gonna admit to the whole total, because nine times out of ten it's possible. When you have twenty seven, it's a few of them you even forgot about. But this is the thing in this case, you think? Kind of, yeah, for some people, most people that are kind of like this, they're they're gonna remember mm. unless they like get to this like old old age where they like you know. See now or something. I can't really I think, remember. If you got but, that many bodies, you you start forgetting at least one or two. I don't know. I I don't have any, so I, I, I don't know. know. I'm just I'm just saying. But um, uh, was what was I about to say? What did you say? I'm sorry, cause you know my brain. I was talking about the ki- the kid. Oh, I was about to say if you already you know get an execution, you might as well confess to any others that you may have. Like, what's the difference? You know what I'm saying? You have 27. Either way it go, you getting. You know. I wonder, were they all men? I do wonder that. Because y'all did interview a woman. So, for y'all to interview them, they were already potential yeah. Potential people y'all were willing to kill. Depending on the questions you're asking. Yeah. And, hey, do you have family? Are you alone? Do people, you know, do you have a lot of friends? Are people going to miss you? That type of thing. Because that's what y'all yeah. wanted. People that Cause even though under the radar. The people that we seen, yeah. all of them were men. Mm-hmm. For y'all to even interview a woman, y'all had to have done a woman as well. You know what I'm saying? To even sadly, like, yeah, this whole situation is just that's sad. What that you're targeting that many people, people talk, talked about them. Hmm. So you would think like Baldwin would have did a story. Mm-hmm. I mean, or yeah. if, what if it's not like? I guess the reason why he probably haven't done a story about him because it's not might not be as much detail. Yeah, that you can. You know what I'm saying? On January 2nd, 2016, a disturbing ad was posted in the personal section of Craigslist. The personal section was a place where people could post personal ads for a variety of reasons. It was an interesting mix between an online dating platform, a space where people could rant and share their opinions on personal experiences, and a place for people to find friends with similar interests. Although most people use the personal section for legitimate reasons, it was also notorious for scams and other illegal activities, which is why Craigslist completely removed the section in 2018. This particular ad was posted by a person claiming to be a serial killer. Disturbingly, the post mentioned two public officials by name, and the person who uploaded the ad said that they would strike again. The ad read, Tulsa- Oh shit. Yeah, he's gonna read it. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I wonder can these postings ever be tracked, like tracked back to an IP address? Yeah, the last one was. They tracked that one back to the home, and then the man said they it really, may be my. Did, I, no, I'm saying, but did they really track it down, or they did research behind it? Not like. Hey, we can go to the find who who's the uploader of this post and see. Are you saying like actually? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> My bad. I, don't, I, don't I don't know. know. I was wanting to thank Tulsa for letting me have my first kill. It all started here, so I was thinking it should also be my first. I was nervous as hell, but I will get over it. It was a stranger on stranger, so the police will have a difficult time. It will not be my last, though. Thinking about going to OKC for next. To the people who started it all, Julie Free, Judge Glasgow. On the day that it was posted, the ad was immediately reported to the police, and an investigation was launched by the Tulsa Police Department. Specifically, the ad thanked a woman named Julie Free, an employee of the Department of Corrections, and Judge Glasgow, who worked in the probate division of the Tulsa County District Court. The Post thanked them, and referred to them as the people who started it all. Because Julie Free and Judge Glasgow worked in overlapping departments and would sometimes interact with the same offenders, police believe that the ad had to have been posted by someone who had, at some point, been involved in the criminal justice system, and that it might have been an act of revenge to stain their image. Craigslist provided the Tulsa Police Department all the information available about the post, but it didn't really lead anywhere. According to the police, there had been no recent crimes that matched the description provided in the ad. 
The police department said that the ad was probably a hoax, but they never found any evidence to prove it, which means it's still possible the post could have been legit. The homicide unit claimed that they had seen a similar situation before when a 918 number texted random people disturbing questions about where to bury a body. The thing about the ad that alarmed the police was that it specifically named two public officials, but to this day it hasn't been confirmed whether this was just some sort of revenge hoax or if something much more sinister was going on. I think revenge is something that actually happened. Probably just revenge. Nah. Nah, I ain't going to. Something actually happened. And it's a, either a murder y'all haven't found out about, about which yeah. is by a body that y'all haven't discovered yet, or is by an old murder that is unsolved. You know what I'm saying? Like an old mystery murder. I don't know. Those are my two two things. I mean, you. I mean, yeah. You could go. You could say either it's just like revenge to tarnish their name, or no. something actually happened. I think something. But happened without there. any other information. Yeah. yeah. I think so happened though, personally, myself. In August of 2014, an 18-year-old girl named Haley Turner posted a Craigslist notice stating that she was, quote, looking to be abducted and taken away. Huh? Although the post immediately gained a lot of online attention, as far as I was able to find, images of the actual ad itself are no longer available. On August 7th, Haley left her house in Michigan and told her mother that she was going to run an errand. A few minutes later, she called a friend on the phone. During the conversation, she mentioned to her friend that she had noticed a man lying in the ditch in the middle of the road, and that she was going to get out of her car to see if he was okay. A few seconds later, Haley uttered the words, he has a gun, and the phone was suddenly disconnected. Terrified, the friend immediately called Haley's father, who drove to the area just north of Ohio in Bedford Township and found his daughter's car running in the road, but Haley was nowhere to be found. Haley was immediately reported as a missing person, and an investigation was launched to find her. Strangely, police found that at 10.06 p.m. on August 7th, Haley had rented the DVDs for two movies from a family video store a few miles from Toledo, Ohio. The phone call with her friend had taken place a few minutes after that. 16 hours after her disappearance, a local resident found Haley standing at a random corner holding a puppy in Ecorse near Detroit. Although she was completely unscathed, she claimed that she had been abducted at gunpoint the night before and that she had jumped from a moving vehicle to escape her captor. The whole story didn't really seem to add up, and police had a hard time believing her. The video footage from the DVD store where she was last seen didn't show anything suspicious, and there were no signs on her body suggesting that she had been attacked. After hours of questioning, Haley Turner eventually confessed and pleaded guilty to causing a false police report to be filed. She was sentenced to three years probation and one month of community service and was fined $15,000 to reimburse the sheriff's office for the 16-hour search. Although her motives for faking her own abduction were never revealed, her mother mentioned that it had been an emotionally difficult year for her daughter and that although she didn't justify her behavior, she interpreted the fake abduction as a cry for help. Some of Haley's other strange Craigslist posts indicated that she had a tendency to seek attention online but these posts have since been deleted and are no longer publicly available. Disturbingly, police revealed that one man did actually respond to the ad, but Haley decided to fake her disappearance by herself instead of communicating with him. The fact that someone responded to this ad and was willing to carry out the abduction of an 18-year-old girl for money is pretty concerning. And what makes this even creepier is that the man who responded to Haley's ad asking to be abducted was never found by police. That's crazy. It just reminded me of that situation in Alabama with the girl. Oh, yeah. That's the whole time in my head. I'm like, that's an, and maybe she came, came across this story and thought about that, too. Maybe, maybe I should do it. Because it sounds very much so like just some, that's crazy. some attention-seeking, fixated-ass shit to me. Yeah. Crazy, man. Things people do in the world for attention. This creepy post was uploaded to Craigslist on July 21st, 2009 by a man claiming to be a Baltimore area homeowner. The ad pretty much speaks for itself and it reads, By now you've probably heard of the Glen Burney family that stored their 83-year-old grandmother's dead body in a freezer. It turns out that no law was broken. Yep, dumping a body is legal around here. Healthcare workers and other professionals are required to report deaths, but ordinary citizens are not. And apparently, no state law prohibits the burial or storage of a body on private property. 
I'm a laid off Baltimore area homeowner. After 10 months of unemployment and the future looking even more grim, I'm willing to consider allowing my backyard to be used for body dumping. Call it a private burial if you prefer. I could probably take a half dozen bodies without arousing the attention of neighbors. It wouldn't hurt to have one under the garden too. Me, a discreet Baltimore County homeowner with a half acre of easily tillable property on a quiet dead end street. You, an individual, not a healthcare worker or other professional required to report a death, with the awkward inconvenience of disposing of a deceased relative, friend, colleague, or acquaintance. You must provide your own trash bags, tarp, quicklime, shovel, etc. I might be available to hold a flashlight, but I won't do any heavy lifting. Accidental deaths or natural causes only. I'm not getting involved in any shenanigans with Omar wannabes. I will not be a participant in or any accessory to any sort of crime. This is a limited time offer. Act now before the state legislature changes the law. If and when the law changes, measures failed 10 years ago after the 1999 incident, you'll be grandfathered, literally and figuratively. Price is negotiable, serious inquiries only. The post itself is off-putting enough, but the context behind the ad is even more disturbing. The links in the ad are both broken. But using the Wayback Machine, I was able to find a 2009 version of the website, Welcome to Baltimore Hunt, which appears to be a sort of online guide for users to upload news and posts about their experience living in Baltimore. The link in the Craigslist ad leads to a blog post written by a man named Gnome Sane. The article goes deeper into the reasons why he uploaded the ad to Craigslist, and what he hoped to accomplish with his underground private burial business. In the comments, more than a few users asked the man if they could use his backyard for a burial. The fact that the uploader of the ad explicitly mentioned that he wouldn't get involved in any criminal activity by burying anyone who hadn't died of natural causes has created a lot of online speculation. Using his backyard as a body dumping location would have been perfectly legal, and the only reason the ad stayed up for so long was because the man wasn't advertising an illegal service, such as burying people who had been murdered. This has made some people think that the only reason why he mentioned that he wouldn't get involved with any crimes in the first place was so that he could keep his ad up on the site, all while responding to emails and getting involved in much more shady body dumping business behind the scenes, but it was never confirmed whether this was actually the case. Despite the disturbing nature of the ad, the claims Noam Sane made in the Craigslist ad are true. In 2009, it was legal for ordinary citizens to abstain from reporting a death and dump a body in Maryland, and the incident that he makes reference to in the ad really did happen. In 2009, police were called to an apartment in Glen Burnie, Maryland, because the body of 83-year-old Doris Lee Cook was in the freezer. Police were told that the grandmother had died several weeks ago in the apartment she shared with her family, and because they had no money for a proper burial, they stored her body in the freezer for two weeks. The other incident that the ad mentions happened in 1999 and involved a 25-year-old father named Richard Marshall who buried his 4-year-old daughter in a garbage bag in the woods in Severn, Maryland. The little girl had passed away in an accident 8 months earlier, and because no law was broken, Richard Marshall was only charged for littering. Since then, several measures have been proposed to make body dumping illegal in Maryland. What in the absolutely fuck? That is the craziest shit I ever heard before. What if, like, let me ask, let me say this. What if the only reason why he posted the ad ain't even pertaining to that because he done buried a body back there and he wanted other people to bury bodies back there just in case if a body gets dug up, he can be like, hey, it was just it was a bunch one of, of the people that came and so nothing to trace back to me, especially if whoever you may have buried wasn't an accident or natural or whatever the case may be and it was, you know, something else. I don't know, child, because that's, that's, that's weird. That is very it's, much so it's weird. It's a lot of weird laws, you know? Yeah. In 2007, a 49-year-old woman from Michigan named Anne Marie Linscott posted a generic freelance job ad on Craigslist. Although the ad has been deleted and no evidence was made publicly available due to the sensitive nature of the incident, the three people who responded to the ad claimed that it looked like a job posting for a freelance writing gig. Disturbingly, as soon as the three people responded to the ad, they were emailed directly by Anne Marie Linscott, who explained that she was actually looking for a quote, silent assassin for an eradication task. Huh? She told the candidates that she was offering $5,000 to anyone who would eliminate a 56 year old California woman named Carol, the wife of a man named Dwayne, who Linscott was having an affair with. According to police reports, Anne Marie and Dwayne had met in an online college course in 2005. 
That same year, they met in person and began their affair when Duane traveled to Nevada for a conference. Two years later, Anne Marie visited Duane in California, after which she started making plans to move to the West Coast. That's when she posted the murder for hire ad on Craigslist. After the candidates all reported the ad to the police, investigators tracked down Anne Marie Linscott and arrested her for using the internet to solicit murder. Police later found that she had also planted an explosive outside of Carol's bedroom in California, but because it didn't go off, she wasn't charged for it. After the incident, Carol left her family and career for three months and had to be hospitalized for stress. According to Lynn Scott's friends and family, this wasn't the first time that Anne Marie became obsessed with a romantic interest. In 1997, she fell in love with a co-worker who had to get a restraining order after she began stalking him. Anne Marie's lawyer explained that she suffered from borderline personality disorder and severe attachment issues, but that didn't stop the court from sentencing her to 12 and a half years in prison in 2009. Okay. After serving her 12 and a half year sentence, Anne Marie Lynn Scott was only recently released from prison. What you say? Oh, for like that. She nah, still went to jail. She got some time. Yeah, she got some That's time. That's what I said. Oh, okay. She got some time. But then you said, you said, oh, oh. Because no, because I had got a little confused. I was like, oh, she served that time before, and then the guy that was doing all this, but she served time, but recently was yeah. released or whatever the case may be. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. honey, Anne Marie, crazy child, honey. That ain't that crazy bitch out there again. I don't be understanding how people... I don't know. I'm just cut from a different cloth because I don't be understanding how people be getting that attached to people and want to take people out bitch. and and take their life and set people up. Man, and if he wanted, and stuff if he wanted to, do, to I, honey, can't no, ain't if no. If he wanted to leave of, his wife, he would have left his wife. He'll leave her. Like at the end of the day, if not he, you making plans, want to hire somebody to take his wife out, girl. But see, y'all gotta. And also, y'all gotta. I stop. blame him too. Y'all gotta stop. Uh, if if you want to move on, just move on. Right. You was gonna have her whole life taken. She probably don't even know, know nothing about don't nothing. Know nothing. And you probably honestly didn't even tell the woman you really want to be. What if you just, hey, somebody get caught your attention? Missing off and you giving a conversation, whatever the case may be, whatever. And she, she didn't fail for it. And she not knowing that she, she already, yeah. That's all it is. That's all it is. See. These stories is crazy. Facts, man. Y'all spend most up in the comments, man. Let us know y'all thoughts about it. Hey, is Craigslist even still going now? I don't know. But Craigslist did used to creep me out back in the day. Oh no, man. I, I ain't never even been though I've been so on there before. Yeah. I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> man, y'all spend most up. Let us know y'all thoughts down below. But as always. I do go with the name DJ McKinnis. It's here in the post. We are. We are. Go and get it. Ain't no time to kick it. Gotta stack a flip for my folks. Dollar, 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't declare me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar, 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 dollar. Let me watch out for my partners. Get my money long. Get my team strong. Let me run away from my problems.